Hi, Dana here, and I've been doing a whole bunch of videos all month so far. It's October 2020, and October is ADHD Awareness Month. And so as someone who has recently figured out that I've been dealing with traits of ADHD for my whole life, I've learned um, a lot of really useful things, and I've developed a lot of compassion for myself because I now understand um, that this is the case. So it's really interesting that seeing something like this in a different light can really be helpful. And so I think a few of my posts have almost seemed to encourage people to look to go and get an ADHD diagnosis or to like question or address whether or not you maybe have ADHD yourself. This particular um, vlog is going to be a kind of the reverse of that. So instead of um, trying to, you know, suggest in any way that you may have ADHD or that you might want to look into whether you have it or not, I'm actually going to, um, especially for the women in the, in, in the crowd that are watching this, I'd like to actually point out that it's entirely possible for some other types of circumstances or health conditions to sometimes be misinterpreted as ADHD. If you have a severe iron deficiency when you're a child and it never gets addressed, it definitely can present as ADHD and it can unfortunately have really long-term consequences. So the concentration um, you know, deficits that might be present with low iron or um, anemia, but even just any kind of iron deficiency and low ferritin, uh, those could be mistaken for ADHD. And so when someone is um, unable to focus and they feel like they don't have energy, sometimes this is right the moment where um, a stimulant medication might get um, prescribed. And so it might seem like a lifesaver. If you have been low in iron, you're going to be exhausted. You'll have fatigue and this is going to give you a boost of energy that might seem like, you know, it like absolutely came from above and this is exactly what I needed. Unfortunately, it's kind of a trap because once you're taking those stimulants um, and that's where you're getting your energy, it's not a real energy. You know, it is um, an external stimulant and you'll never be addressing the root cause. And the problem with that is that um, not treating low iron through childhood can really leave people in a place where they may have cogn cognitive de deficits that they can't necessarily make up later. So uh, there are a lot of things with ADHD that um, I have been, for example, um, very restless for a lot of my life, but a lot of those symptoms also mimic or overlap with low iron. So I know genetically that I'm someone that has a hard time absorbing iron and um, other women in my family have symptoms of low iron and um, struggle to get their iron up. And um, unfortunately, iron deficits aren't well addressed. And if you ask a lot of doctors about ferritin, they'll say, oh, that's just your storage form of iron. It doesn't do anything that, um, you know, that number doesn't really matter. There's no symptoms if you're low in ferritin, which isn't true. And so um, it's really not true. And depending on the lab where you go, um, the ranges can really differ across North America from one place to another for the healthy range for ferritin. So you might hear that it's anything from six to like 250 or something crazy like that. And so there's obviously going to be a difference for someone that's at a 10 and someone that's at a, a 200. They're going to definitely feel a difference. Um, it might be a storage form of iron, but the place it gets stored is... Um, you know, your muscles, so your muscles might feel different, whether they're full of iron or not, um, your bone marrow, you know, so you, you, you also um, can shunt some of that iron into your hair. So if your hair starts falling out, that's one of the big signs that your ferritins drop below like a 40. Um, so below a 40 is where a lot of women start to see their hair fall out. Um, men can see their hair fall out too. And men who have um, low iron as boys are definitely going to be more likely to be pigeonholed into the ADHD category, whether they have that 
or not. Um, and so as much as I do think that it's important that if you have ADHD that you get a proper diagnosis, if that's something that you want, if you think that that would help you to um, access services or at least just understand that that's what you're dealing with so that you can work with it. Um, I also think that it's important to not get a diagnosis of ADHD if um, cognitively you don't have those kinds of um, issues and it's really more of a, um, it's a presentation that's really due to a low iron situation. So I want to bring that up. There are a couple of people that are um, doing a really good job of addressing what it means to have low iron and how much that can really affect someone and it can be really devastating. Um, you can feel like you can't get on with your life. I mean, you're, you could be so fatigued that you can't really get out of bed, um, or, you know, too tired to think. So some of the signs of low iron that overlap with ADHD is poor concentration, poor memory, um, kind of irritability or, um, trouble regulating moods, um, as well as, um, being kind of restless. So restless legs, uh, which um, a kind of can be a, like a twitchy kind of a um, uh, you know a situation with the legs, especially at night when you're trying to go to sleep. That is um, like a telltale sign of low iron. But uh, you know, just being restless in general can also be a sign of ADHD. So you can see how it's easy to confuse the two. And I just think that um, if you have like cold hands and feet. Um, dry skin, dry hair, chipping nails, um, cravings for ice or strange, you know, items. Or if you have other signs of low iron, like, you know, poor immunity um, or um, just extreme fatigue. Uh, you know, if or if you have some of the things that might lead to iron deficiency, like heavy periods or um, ulcers or any kind of um, internal bleeding, so like ulcerative colitis, something like that, then you might want to get your iron and especially your ferritin level checked and see if that is um, helpful. And even if it comes out in the normal range, just look at what the number is. If the number is below you know, 25, if the number's below even 40 or 50 in your ferritin numbers, you could probably bring that up and feel better. And, and if you are in that lower end of the normal scale, like you can raise it and still be in the normal range in the safe range. So you have a lot of room to bring that up and then you'll know if that's what it was or not. Because if you bring it up to 75 and 80 it's still safe and you if you don't feel better then you kind of know like that you know because by 80 90 a lot of people feel way way better way less fatigue they can concentrate more and all that kind of stuff and um so that would be something to give a try so it's not always adhd some things have very similar overlapping um types of symptoms there are a lot of other health concerns out there um, that can affect our mental state. So zinc, B6, B2, B12, all of those things can affect um, our cognitive function and our mental health. So it's not always ADHD. And um, if it is, get yourself checked out and um, maybe get the help that you deserve so that you can live your best life because ADHD can be like an amazing gift. You just have to know how to work with it. Um, but, you know, don't be afraid to like look at some other potential, you know, things that it could be as well. Because um, in, in other words, if if uh, one door doesn't seem to lead anywhere, then maybe um, go through some other doors and, and see if they lead anywhere. And if you need any, um, you know, help or guidance or tips on some things to check out, then definitely um, talk to me about that and I'd be happy to talk to you about it. So uh, that was just my quick video on um, ADHD today and, and not confusing it with um, low ferritin levels. Thanks for joining. Bye.